Good day and welcome to today's preview. We, we will be looking at the racing from Kenilworth on the summer track. Uh, there's eight races on the card. And um, before we start looking at the form and uh, betting, just one or two things I would like to touch, to touch on. For those persons who are watching um, this video for the first time, what um, Outsider Genie does it, Outsider Genie give you um, do form analysis and then we give you outsider selections that you can add to your own selections. And by doing that, you can then get the uh, higher payout uh, should those outsiders arrive. We also offer a subscription service um, whereby you can get our daily form analysis where we give you race by race selections, affordable PA and pick six selections, trifectas and quartet selections with often wins and paying good dividends. Um, Monday, we had a quartet that paid over 4,000 land that we recommended. And we also give you our best bets of the day. The best bet, um, I think our strike rate is about 60 to 70%. And it's normally at good prices. We have given lately, we have given you best bets that is one as high as 11 to one and five to one. So we try and give you value. We also give you value bets where you can play each way or also that we think might have a chance either to win or place. Um, on Tuesday, um, on Monday, we gave you a horse uh, called Terraveda that uh, paid a time, uh, that was, 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 was an outright selection and it paid 10 rand 90 a place and finished third. What we do is, um, and, and also will be in, in effect for this video, we give you three selections per race. The first selection is our outright selection. Our outright selection can be at any price. Um, as I said, Terraveda was our outright selection and he was available that morning at 53 to one and he duly ran third playing 10 rand 20 a place. Then we give you two outsider selections in no particular order. Um, and um, you can then add it to your selection on Monday, we gave her uh, in, in the second race, uh, star over, over Cape Town one. That was our outsider selection. It was like 20 to one. And then our other uh, outsider selection ran second, giving exact up by a dividend of 160 rand. Yeah, um, outsider genie in uh, its normal fee is 500 rand. But since we already are half of the month, in half of the month, you can uh, subscribe now from now till the end of December for only 250 Rand. And please note on the big race days in Cape Town, if you're not a subscriber, you will unfortunately not have access to the preview daily video, which give pe people also valuable information as we decided that on these big racing days, only subscribers will have access to the preview, the video preview, because what I'm doing on those days is I give a more thorough uh, analysis of each race whereby like what I'm doing today is a lot of people complain that, you know, that the video is too long. Other people want me to do more uh, uh, analysis of the horses. So what I'm doing here now is I just do my outright selection, my two outsider selection, and maybe discuss the chances of one or two other horses in the race to try and keep the video to a length of about half an hour. So, but on these big race days now, I'm doing, uh, uh, I do analysis on each horse in the race. So that is valuable information. Last week in Cape Town on the big race day, I gave you four winners. I gave you Celtic C, which jumped at four to one. I give you Belga Belga Belgarian, who won at four to one. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, I do give valuable information, which make the few rand that you have to pay for the selection really insignificant in terms of what you can win using my advice. So if you want to subscribe, please call me on or WhatsApp me on 083-585-5133 for international uh, people, plus 27835855133. So let's go racing at Kenilworth, where the first race is a work riders um, race, which I'm not going to do any selections on, as I'm not familiar with those cable uh, riders. So I can't do a proper assessment. My advice to you is keep your money in your pocket, start playing from the second race. So let's let, let us look at the betting bin um, from Kenilworth. Okay. 
it's funny about this. For those who are interested in betting on a first race, Freedom Park 22 to 10, Waterfly 22 to 10, Columns Delight, which is a first timer, 5 to 2, Legal Dream 4 to 1, 12 to 1, Legitimize, and 40 to 1, Money, Money, Money. So here's the second race, number 12, Voice Notes 11 to 10, Lady Catherine 11 to 2, Princess Santa 6 to 1, Regards to All 8 to 1, Park to Go 12 to 1, Silly Chestnut 14 to 1, 20 to 1, and Better the Rest. So here my first selection is number 12, the favorite. Um, yeah, uh, I uh, sometimes I'm a bit skeptical to, um, you know, give selections where the horse ran a very good first race. But um, yeah, I'm willing to give this horse a chance. He did finish well, 26.4, showed green and was hanging, but still managed to hang on for second place voice notes. Uh, I see there was a bit of money backing from eight to one to 15 to four. So uh, maybe it can improve the day, land up in a first uh, first box. Then we have the speedster year number one, which is Cap Lady Catherine. Lady Catherine um, has had a few seconds, um, goes to the front, always been run out of it, did finish a fifth in that race behind Laser Gold. But today I have Anton Marcus on board. Maybe he can bring the best out of this fully. My other outsider selection here is number 10, which is uh, Princess Santo. Princess Santo is also running well. That run um, third behind um, Magnetic Dime. But what just concerns me was that 400 to finish 27.1. Wow, that is really not fast. So uh, I do think that uh, the favorite number 12 also ran 26.4, which is also, which ain't fast either. So here we have also number 11, Rose says Duke of Marmalade Philly by Rose Tips. So looking at a breeding, this horse might want to go further, but since it's its first race, you might want to include this in your bets. Since Lyle Hewitson is on board, can probably maybe uh, land up running a place. Uh, path to go, also first time, and also nicely bred, but by go deputy, we'll probably want to want a bit further, um, I would think. Um, here's a Carraro by a Ford with me. The same thing here, I think, maybe also would need longer distance. So uh, and then also, and I just want to mention number four, regards to, regards to, to all. You must keep an eye out on the Jeff Woodruff stable. The Jeff Woodruff stable is getting nicely informed in form here in Cape Town now that he's relocated. Let ran fourth in that race behind Laser Gold. And I think can be involved in the finish today. So let's move on to race number three. Race number three is a maiden plate over 1,600 meters. Let's have a look at the betting. The betting being as follows. Number 16, Warrior, 5 to 2. Juan Carlos, 9 to 2. Dirty Martini, um, 5 to 1. Give me a dancer, 11 to 2. Isos, 8 to 1. Belponto, also 10 to 1. 16 to 1. And longer the rest. Now, also, I think a very open maiden plate. And here, my first selection is number 1, Dirty Martini. I did recommend this horse last time as well. But as you can see, it was not striding out, but still managed to run a third. I really like the look of the run that he, we ran second behind Kariba Hall because he ran near the 22.1, 400 to finish, which is quite very reasonable. And I think if you can repeat that run, you'll be, be standing in the first, in the number one box at the end of the race. And my outside of selections is number three, Esos. Esos is... Um, Uh, also, horse that runs a lot of places, and I would think, but but unfortunately, it's got draw 14. So that is not the best thing that could happen. But I think it will still run a good race. Probably also go to the front from draw 14. But yeah, uh, can be involved in the finish, but the draw is a, a bit of a concern. Then also, my other outsider selection is number six, Belfonte, uh, Bass Robinson stable. This horse, I would think, is an ideal world by Count de Boisme. And um, did, fin did run um, over the 1600 meters last time and didn't run too badly, five point, just over five lengths behind the winner. And I think this was ready to improve. Another horse that you also can have a look at is number five, called Drogo, uh, but also drawn 12, but maybe at the back end of your quartet, 
if you can afford. And here we have race number seven. We have a Camelot cult, uh, but this horse hasn't shown a lot. Has been dead and thereabouts, but with Lyle Hewitson probably can be involved in the finish, maybe on the also back end of your quartet. All in all, a very open um, first race. Here we have number 12, Juan Carlos. He also ran by legitimate Andy and then lack extra at the end, in, um, over the 1600 meters, but can probably be involved in the finish. And also, you had a favorite number 16 warrior, a Futura by a Commando Me, very well bred. And this Snape combination and the Vuri is a combination that you can, cannot discard. So this horse ran on nicely 22.8. And before that, 22.6. So I would also think might have a huge chance today. And I'm thinking that the race can be fought out probably by numbers 1 and 16. Then we move to race number 4, which is a fully submerged handicap, 79. Class C, average minute rate at 76. Let's have a look at the betting here. Here the betting is as follows. Number 1, Silver Sable, 3 to 1. Flower of Saigon, 7 to 2. So flawless, five to one, Queen's Club, eight to one, eight to one, Kooning, eight to one, Regina, Isabella, Orford's Flash, 12 to one, along with the race, scratch number three and 11. So uh, let's have a look here, now, race number four. My first selection uh, is Flower of Saigon. Uh, if you did see here, uh, we said that the average mid rate is a class C, average mid rate at six, uh, 76. So here's Flower of Saigon, which has run against some useful opposition. Last time out ran second behind Chat Chat Ching. Now Chat Ching ran third in a group one on Saturday behind that very really good horse um, from Justin Snape. The name escapes me just now for a second. Also ran in a in a much higher division, 81, 83, 87, um, fourth behind Secret Depth. Now finding it here down in class. And but but my only concern is is the draw number 10. But the favorite is drawn number 12, which is even deeper. And uh, yeah, I would think that number two, Flower Saigon, would have a huge chance in this race, as number one, Sable Sabia, hasn't run in that kind of uh, division yet and was beaten in a lower division last time. Um, so I'm confident of my selection, number two, Flower of Saigon. Outside of selections that you can look at is number six, Queen's Club. For, uh, for Rian Snape again. This horse has also run against some decent opposition, 81, uh, 83. Secret Depths was in the same race as my first selection and finished behind it. But in this class, I think can be a factor. factor. This then Dennis T. Philly. And my other outsider selection is number eight, which is Regina Isabella. Also a horse that has just won a maiden, but very nicely drawn at, at number one. And I think it, it would, would, to see, would seem that this twice over, um, a fairly by twice over by Captain L. May might have some ability. So definitely a horse that you can keep an eye on. So that is then the next move on to the next race, which is race number six, race, sorry, race number five, which is a fairly similar divided the handicap. Class B, average minute rating 89 over the 1600 meters. Let's have a look here at the betting. So here we have the betting number three, our prize due, 16 to 10. Three to one spring is in the air. Gimme, 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 33 to 10. Secret depths, eight to one. Quick step lady, 12 to one. Smarty pants, 12 to one. Early 16 and Alfred's girl, 16. Scratch number nine, Aaron's idol. So here my first selection, in race number five is horse number seven. Now, if you have a look here at horse number seven, we are we are racing in a B89. Now, this horse last time out ran in a 91 and just got beaten with Solomons on board. And I think today this horse can go one better with this lightweight. It's carried, you know, it's carrying uh, 49 and a half, whereby your favorite number one is, sorry, number two. Number three is carrying 56, so it's giving it um, four, and a half, four and a half kilograms. But number three, our prize due, not without a chance, has also been running against uh, some good opposition. So here's the name I couldn't get last time, Captain Ransom. That's the, the horse that I was talking uh, just about in the previous race. Now, which also another thing, the Duke of Marmalade, 
is also very well bred, being at that our table mountain me. So free our price jewel, definitely in where we use chance. My only reason why I'm choosing this number uh, seven is because of the fact that, that it's getting a lightweight and only just got run out of it last time. But certainly our price jewel, not without a chance. Then my outsider selections is number five, Secret Dev. Secret Dev is also a mare that runs well, always there and thereabouts. You know, if it doesn't win, normally it runs a place or just, just behind the placings, but not too far off. She's really a mare that always give the, gives the best and has to run against some useful opposition, so not a runner to, that you can discard. Then my other outsider selection in this race is number eight. Number eight is Quick Step Lady. Uh, yeah, Lyle Hewitson from draw four again, uh, again for an L stable. There's also always, always there and thereabouts, as you can see, just behind Secret Deep, Indiana, Elusive Fortune. So, um, and already it's 431 days since he last been, uh, still since his last one, but definitely due for the change of luck. Then we move to race number six, which is a merit rated 102 divided handicap. Class A, 90, uh, minute rated, average minute rated of 97, over the 1,400 meters. So let's have a look here at race number six. The race number six, we have number of nine, five to two, Snow Report, four to one, Liberty Hall, six to one, Ready Steady Go, seven to one, Photocopy, seven to one, Cabo da Cruz, eight to one, eight to one, Spectra Force, Apollo Ice, 14 and 20 to one, Vikram, Scratch number two. So I just want to confirm here, we've got adding here, the class A average minute rate at 97. Now here, my first selection in race number six is number one, ready, steady, go. If you have a look here, you'll see that this gelding is now 459 days since his last win. But if you have a look at the fields that this horse has run against, 102, Kashimir, elusive trader, Run Fox Run, Sevilla, Spectre Force, Hurricane Hurry, here again, just behind Casimir, last time out, Eric the Red, which I think um, was a very useful run. Um, and I can't, um, you know, I, I think really steady go today will be hard to beat in this, uh, in this field. Course and distance, free run, one win, one second, and a fourth. And I'm sure really steady go today at 7 to 1 very good each way value. Then my other outsider selections is number six, which is photocopy. Photocopy is in the same mode as number one. Always running well against some useful opposition, pinker than pinker than silver operator. And also getting the minus two and a half that would assist. So photocopy definitely was that you need to include in all your play. And also um, number outsider selection is number Number eight, Liberty Hall. Um, sorry, number seven. Number seven is Spectra Force, which is a stable companion who won nicely uh, over 1,400 meters, beating Ready Steady Go. Um, but he's now a little bit of a huge weight turnaround. And I think this time it will be Ready Steady's Go turn. But also Spectra Force also running against some good uh, um, races. Last time got beaten in PE behind that good horse, Mar Mara C. That's now eight runs, eight wins, and PE. So definitely not um, disgraced losing against a horse of that cal caliber. But yeah, the Crawford stable in, is in form, and definitely watch out for that. Then we move on to um, here's the favorite number nine, my hopes and dreams. Definitely, he has got a huge chance, but um, I, I think it, it hasn't really run in the class of the uh, aforementioned. But definitely, in of a chance, you know, a horse that has won is free of his last four runs, can't be a donkey. So, definitely, a horse with a huge chance, my hopes and dreams. So, let's move on to race number seven, which is a merit rated 85 divided handicap, class C, average merit rated 79. And here we have the following race number, race seven, number 10, four to one, double the five, nine to two, four, three, six to one. Double charge seven to one, Adios Amigo seven to one, Jeans Man nine to one, Pop of Choice ten to one, twelve to one, the second wave, sixteen to one, Lucky Dancer, Cyber Law sixteen to one, 
and 20 to 1 number free as with causal. Now, there was a reason why I did the betting right down to the bottom, because my first election here, ladies and gentlemen, is hold on to your hats. Is this number three, Ashford Castle? Now you would might be thinking, I must be off my rockets. First of all, this horse is extremely, extremely well bred. Wild as has flown a number of good horses in the town is by Dylan Thomas. Monet Winner is on a losing streak of over 100 runs without a uh, ride, without a winner. He must be desperate to ride a winner. The horse is well drawn. All right, and it's by and it's Lynn Cotson. This horse won his first race in Cape Town, easing up by 2.6 behind Gainsford over the 1,200 meters. Then ran in, in, a, in, in a group B, uh, group two, behind the breeze of we think, I mean, and that form is really standing up. A lot of runners behind the breeze as came out to win. Then it was rested and came, came down, came, and then came, uh, was uh, uh, given a pipe opener over a thousand meters behind Master Vargas. It had pace, but I think needed a run. Then last time out was pitted against Mamouz, which is now one of the favorites for Saturday's uh, guineas. And also just finding over the last uh, a few, um, last 200 meters. And I would think maybe just needing this run. I think Ashford Castle today, a 20 to one, a huge runner. So go take each way because I can tell you that the form of this horse doesn't reflect the ability of this horse. And I think Ashford Castle can be a huge surprise today. In my outsider selections as follows. Number one, double the fun. Double the fun is also a horse that came off a, a long rest and just needed to run last time out can definitely be, uh, I think, also a contender in this race. And my other outsider selection is number nine, um, Adios Amigos. This horse is elusive art by Captain L, very well bred. Elusive sports are running. I mean, I think elusive sports is one of those stallions that really, really surprised me. Now, if you look at number nine, Adios Amigos, this horse ran in three and a half rings behind Seeking the Stars. Seeking the Stars, a future champion and second favorite behind Mamouz for Saturday's Guineas. This horse is carrying 53 and a half, minus two and a half. And I think this horse can be the biggest dangers to number one and three in my other two selections. So keep an eye on for number nine, Adios Amigos. Then here we have... Um, Number 10, legitimate. Now, legitimate uh, did win its maiden last time out, but we're going to have to wait and see um, you know, if he can improve and to win further. Now, let's move to race number, number eight. It's the large race on the court. It is a the 74 handicap. Class D, average margin rating 71. And here we have number three, Alpha Papa, four to one. Waterman, four to one. Alaska Knight, four to one. Five to one, Matthew the King. Porsche Crowd, 14 to one. Rate eight, 14 to one, 16 to one, and better the rest. Now here my first selection is number nine, which is Matthew the King. Matthew the King, um, won his first race, he was the first offspring of Louis the King last year, or this year, to win. And he really won in, and Shaboom has won again since, ran second to Eric the Red, and then somewhere along the line, the wheels fell off. But fortunately, in the last two runs, the horse has improved, and I was actually considering it to make it my best bet of the day, but I then made my best bet spring is in the air. But this was my second choice, looking at making the best bet of the day. I think this race, this or Matthew the King today, is, is ready to run a huge race. Just got run out of it last time by Alpha Papa. Now, let me just quickly have a look at, it was a half, uh, it was um, a kilogram difference in favor of Alpha Papa last time. Now, Alpha Papa carrying, 59 and Maverick the King carrying 58, so there's a kilogram better off. But what amazes me sometimes in horse racing is this that this horse 
took quite a while. He took 10 runs to win his maiden, actually 11 runs to win his maiden, and then follows up with another win. I nearly fell off my chair when I saw that horse coming through to win, but it had had a table change. So that they say has changed as good as a holiday. In my outsider selection is number four, Faithful. Um, Faithful um, is also a horse, I think, that ran in the same race. But sometimes he surprises and um, uh, Carty is really trying to uh, you know, win races. So uh, this is a nice outsider that has run against some decent was in there, ran again the Islands Ideal in the 74. Um, so, and then in, in the run in the 90s, Meredith had dropped from 86 to 72. So definitely a horse that is, has got a nice big drop in Meredith and can improve to be involved in the finish. My other outsider selections, number eight, Force the Crowd. Uh, also, horse has been running well lately, if not winning, running in the places or close to the places, getting the minus two uh, today again. So my, I'm definitely in with a chance. So that brings us to the end of, of our uh, preview. I hope I could point in the right direction for a few winners. And as I always say, break a leg. <laughs>